Can we make some remarks beforehand, Bob? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, Warm them up a little. Certainly. Sure. Um, my name is Karen Testerman, and I am a uh, have been a candidate for the United States Senate from the state of New Hampshire. Um, time and time again, we have watched as uh, our campaigns, our conservative candidates, have come forward and um, caused a split in the uh, in the ticket because we have conservatives who really do love the Republican platform, who stand by the platform, and are willing to go out and fight for our principles, for our values, for our country. This is not about any individual. This is not about any agenda. This is about the United States of America. And that is why, today, I will not cause our principle-driven voters primary voters especially, to be, uh, to cast a, a, a vote that is self, uh, it, that causes them to stumble and uh, that doesn't mean anything. And so as a person who has gone through and watched over the years, as we have gone through election after election, we just had one down in South Carolina. We had one in 2012 when we had our second congressional uh, uh, fight for the second congressional seat. And we did it in 2010 when I ran for governor. And I simply will not stand by and split a vote any longer. And so for that reason and that reason alone, I am going to step aside and allow Bob Smith to be the only name on the, prim on the Republican primary ballot that is a conservative, that is a true conservative, that is a Republican platform conservative, someone who has gone down to Washington, D.C. and stood strong for life, liberty, and freedom, someone who has gone down to Washington, D.C., and when the party decided to leave him, he was frustrated and he left the party. But I would have done the same thing. I was here in New Hampshire supporting him at the same time, and I fully understood when the party leaves its principles, then we the people sometimes get frustrated, and there are many of you out there who <laughs> have left the party who have become independents. Well, I'm welcoming you back into the party because you now have someone that you can get behind and you can fight for, and then we can win this nomination. We can, as conservatives, who believe in our party platform win this nomination and we can go forward with it and make Jean Shaheen a one-term yes. senator. <laughs> and so now I'd like to say, please join me. It's going to take uh, all of us getting together and and not only uh, stepping up and saying that we're going to be behind Bob Smith, we have to work. We have to get out and we have to go to the polls. We have to do the sign waves. We have to do the, the letters to the editor. We have to do the phone calls. But we can win this if we will unite together behind Bob Smith. And so I welcome you. It's going to also take our financial uh, contributions to do so as well. So dig deep and help us make Bob Smith the next senator from, United, from New Hampshire. First of all, I, I, I hope you all can understand and appreciate the tremendous and unprecedented political and personal courage uh, for Karen Testerman to do what she just did. That's unprecedented. You don't, you don't see it, you don't hear it uh, anywhere. And I, I, to, to 
people say dropping out of the race. Karen is not dropping out of the race. Karen is with us every step of the way. We are, we are going to be side by side wherever it takes. She, she and her entire organization, this is not just two people. These are two organizations that are bound and determined and committed to restore our constitutional values and principles, not only in New Hampshire, but also to America. So Karen, I can't tell you how much I respect you and admire you. This is easy for me. It's not easy for Karen. So she deserved it around this applause. I don't know if not all of you felt this when you came in, but there was, breeze, there was a breeze blowing, and it was just gentle, and then it kind of picked up a little momentum. It was coming out of Virginia. And, uh, <laughs> Had to, I thought the word canner was uh, on there, oh. and uh, a guy named uh, Brat, and the breeze is blowing. It's coming here. It's coming to New Hampshire. It's um, they spent a lot of money down there. And, uh, the Mr. Uh, uh, Cantor spent eight million dollars, and his opponent spent two hundred and fifty thousand. One hundred and seventy thousand. One hundred and seventy. Wow. Yeah. And so, and and the polls all had Cantor in the lead by thirteen or fourteen <laughs> points. And they had all the endorsements. Sound familiar? Yeah. All right. So uh, this is going to be a great race, but I want to just say, leave this message, and we'll be happy to take your questions. Conservatives are unified in New Hampshire. Yes. This, this is the first step. This is the first step for unity throughout, from now all the way through to the presidential primary. If you want to win in New Hampshire, we're going to show you how it's done. We're going to unseat Gene Shaheen. We're going to win this primary with a conservative, as, as, uh, as you just said, as Karen just said, a platform a Republican, one who supports the Republican platform, doesn't retreat from it. And we are going to go all across the state, arm in arm, with every one of our people, uh, all of you, and we're going to win. And we're going to surprise everybody. They all think it's uh, it's uh, predetermined. The, uh, the all the prognosticators, just like Virginia, they said, "Oh, it's all over, no problem." Yeah. Well, I got news for them. They're gonna have a long night. On September. <laughs> 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 how was it decided that yours would be the name that stayed on the ballot? I don't know. We just started came to an agreement, didn't we? We did. We had a lot of talks. Uh, Karen can speak for herself. We had a lot of talks. No one, I'd say this, no one asked the other one to get out. It was. A, it was. That's. That I think is fair to say. And uh, we, we just uh, came to the I think it was Karen who, uh, who to her credit, uh, just wanted to make sure that we were united. And we both made that point. We made that commitment many right. weeks ago that one way or the other, uh, there would be only one candidate. And so I think beyond that would be kind of uh, more proprietary. But Karen, can you talk about how you came to this decision? I have often thought about what we need to do, and I am when Bob got into the race, I uh, that was a concern of mine uh, that we only have uh, one voice go forward because, as I said, I've, w I've witnessed it too many times where we've split the conservative vote, and and much to our detriment, it's happened repeatedly since I've moved to New Hampshire in 1993, and so I refuse to be a cause of that happening, and I think it's so much more important about the values that we hold for this country, uh, the principles that we have fought for, that our, our founding fathers have fought for, all of these people who have gone before us. I mean, look what happens when we pull out and we don't um, support what we know to be right. We just watch what happened in Baghdad and uh, in Iraq right recently. Uh, we cannot let this go down but tubes, and we have a responsibility to not only the people that we lead, but also to our country and to those who have gone before us. So um, that's why I'm doing it. It's not for me, it's for the country. You know, and I think in that vein, and this would include reporters, someday somebody's going to write the history of, of this period. And it's, it's going it to involve you as reporters, involve all of us as people. And how do we want to be remembered? Do we want to be remembered as the generation that lost America or the generation that saved America? I think the answer is pretty obvious. So that's why it has to start among candidates like us uh, so that we can start this process to move across the country. And uh, I think you're seeing it happen. And uh, you're going to see more of it. And I think we've had enough, and we're moving forward to save our country. Have you or do you plan to reach out to Jim Rubens to try to get him on board? This is a, uh, this is a, 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 co a press conference to unite the conservatives 
of the Republican Party. Do you think this would be possible? I know you're, you said you were talking about this for weeks, but what if it is how many did uh, Tuesday night's results in Virginia have? Was, would, would this have happened anyway? Do you think, would you have done this, had Cantor won, for instance? No, I mean, yes, yes, I'm sorry. It, it had no impact on us, is what I was trying to say. Um, the, the reality is, is that when you go uh, praying and, and searching deep within your soul as to what would be most honoring to the creator that, that made this country possible, uh, then you have to uh, know that you are making that right decision and that you're looking deep and long and hard and it's not any poll, it's not any uh, necessarily anybody's counsel that brings it about, but it is something that you search deep within yourself to say, uh, am I willing to sacrifice what I think is, um, you know, I think I'm still a good candidate. I think that I still have a lot to offer to the state of New Hampshire, and I will not go away, but um, it's time to unite. Thank you. I know what you get out of this, uh, Senator Smith. Uh, what, do, what do you get out of this? I mean, you had some campaign debt in, in April. Is he going to pay that off? Are you going to be a campaign chair of the campaign? What, was there a deal? We haven't room? discussed that part of it. I mean, you know, it, it's, it's a, a mutual thing. When you're, wor when you're working for a common cause, you're not trying to look and see what you can get out of it. You're looking for to see how can we move forward united and how can we make a difference in the state of New Hampshire and how can we make a difference when we get down to Washington, D.C. What about financially for you, Senator? Um, do you think this will help you raise money nationally as now the only fiscal and social conservative run? Well, I, I think the message is very clear to the, the national conservatives. If they mean what they say, we're talking about conservative organizations, conservative candidates for president. Uh, we've united here on the ground in New Hampshire. Uh, if you're coming up here and running as a conservative, here we are. Uh, that's their call. Uh, I welcome it. Uh, there's certainly, I, with uh, Karen and me, we were the only pro-life candidates in the race, number one. So uh, there ought to be room there for some support. Uh, and uh, there are many conservative candidates who I believe should be on board. But you know what? We're not running a campaign on endorsements. We're going to run a campaign on the ground. And uh, with their, I, I'll tell you, people are unbelievable. I went to an event last night in Wolfboro, and a guy drove all the way up from Hooksit just to tell me that he appreciated the, what, what we were doing in terms of the, the campaign. And uh, this is going on all over. I know Karen's heard the same thing because we've talked about it. So there's a heck of a lot of support out there for the cause, not for particularly a candidate, but for the cause. We're tired of it. We're, we're tired of being spied upon, criticized for our political beliefs. We now have a situation in the world where uh, it's just getting worse and worse by the, by the day. Every, every time, every time you open the newspaper or hear the, watch TV, there's some horrible thing going on out there you know, with the president and his foreign policy. Are losing our freedoms. People are sick of it, and uh, you, and the front of Gene Shaheen stands on the Senate floor and says, "Okay, you keep your health care if you want to. Your doctor, excuse me, if you want to. Well, thank you. If but you want to pay for it now, yeah, you can now do it now if you want to pay, pay for more. it. Yeah, pay a little more. And so that's not America, and and people know it, and they're tired of it, and they're coming out in droves, and it's going to be a fun election and a fun election night. Senator, real quick. Um, one of the things you just mentioned about the breeze coming from Virginia, it wasn't necessarily just about establishment people in Washington or values, but it was also about the time period that, that uh, Representative Canner has spent and the things he had done there. While you've done a number of creative things while you're in Washington, you technically are the establishment candidate who spent the most time in Washington, whereas Karen is the new voice who hasn't had the time in Washington to serve. How, how do you juxtapose that part of it since she was in the race first since she came up with many of the same, you have many of the same values, she hasn't had the time there. That's, a, that's another part of the brat race that you kind of aren't really addressing. Well, it's the, the fact of the matter is people are upset with uh, our, our government. I mean, you, you watch the poll numbers there. I, that is one poll that I do pay attention to. Uh, the popularity of our Congress is, is diminishing. Uh, it's gone down even below double digits at this point. And so what I want to tell you is that Senator Smith has experience. He has a track record. We know that he stands strong. And, and it's easy to go down and uh, want to say, well, we've got a new voice on the, on the block. But we, what's more important is that we have a solid voice, a strong voice, 
someone who is unwavering, and we and I've watched as Senator Smith has been unwavering in everything that he's done, and so that's why I'm willing to get behind him, and that's why Amer uh, New Hampshire citizens are going to be willing to get behind him as well because they're they know that Washington's broken, and that is one of the major uh, messages that came out of the uh, rat race was that Washington's broken. We want somebody that's going to go down and fight for us, and we know that Senator Smith is a fighter, and so that's why he, he we we don't have to worry about the establishment tag. Senator, you brought up. Let me just, just quickly, Josh, uh, just one more thing. Uh, if uh, if uh, you, if you can sell the story that Bob Smith is an establishment politician, you can probably sell a bridge in Arizona somewhere that goes to the ocean. I mean, come on. I, mean, come I, did, on. I didn't say establishment for the record. I said time in Washington. Well, you've okay. been a representative and you've been a right. senator. Right, and I think she what, hasn't been. Correct, and you, I think that's a good balance here, and I, I respect that. And she's done a tremendous job, Karen, has on the ground here, organizing uh, Keystone and so many organizations and, and fighting for the. Uh, principles of uh, life, liberty, pursuit of happiness, constitutions, for families, faith. I mean, it's wonderful. It's a great balance, and I, I welcome it, and, I, and I need, we need that kind of support to win. It's grassroots. But again, that election down there was, was, uh, was about not doing the job that you were elected to do. It doesn't matter who you are. Uh, if you don't, if you, and it doesn't matter how long you're. You know, if you want to get Ronald Reagan back, I'll take him in a heartbeat. So, I think mean, I'll take him for 12, 14, 20 years, whatever he wants to serve. So, I'm not concerned about the service time limit. I'm concerned about what you do when you get there. I do want to ask you, sir. You talked about the abortion organization and support. Jim Rubin's already picked up the endorsement of the National Liberty Caucus. Seem to indicate that there will still be moving forward a split amongst conservative support. You say that's necessary. Well, I think it's obvious that, that Karen Testament and I are the conservatives in this race, and we've just united. And so, I, I with all due respect, I think a, an endorsement that's uh, fairly shallow uh, is not uh, is not is not sufficient. But this conference is about conservative unity. It's not about Jim Rubin. It's about conservative unity, and we're here united. I don't see Mr. Rubin's here, so. Well, additionally, you know, our, our party platform talks about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It talks about the family. It talks about freedom. It, it talks about uh, control on, your, on spending and uh, being physically responsible in a small and limited government in Washington, D.C. And that's what we're running on. That's what we're going to go forward with. Uh, Mr. Rubens is pro-choice. He's uh, a for a carbon tax, there's so many different things that he is for that makes him not the conservative uh, candidate. Why is that endorsement Well, I don't think, I think that uh, the endorsement came, and then if you talk to the rank and file, there are a lot of rank and file that don't agree. That's, that's the reason I use that term. And I think if you talk to a lot of the folks in that organization, uh, they would tell you that it's, um, that they don't agree with it. Which came from the top, and that's one another. But I think if, if we, if Karen and I get an endorsement of the right to life, I think you'll find it comes in rank and file, not just from the top. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.